Hello. The theme of the CE Weldon Libraries uh, summer program this year is Imagine Your Story. And this is a, a presentation for, for that program. All of us have a story. Um, uh, all humans have stories, but, but all, all species have stories and all wildlife uh, ha have their own stories as well. My name is Eric Pellerin, and I'm a professor of wildlife biology at the University of Tennessee at Martin. And I'm here to talk today about some of the stories uh, of some of the species of, of wildlife that we, we know and love in Tennessee, and maybe some that we, we don't know so well. The, the title of my presentation is Tennessee's Superlative Wildlife. I'm fashioning, fashioning it off of the, uh, uh, the, the, the high school, the collegiate um, uh, senior superlatives, um, uh, most likely to succeed, best dressed, and that sort of thing. I've chosen um, a couple of dozen or so superlatives um, based on my own biased opinions. You might disagree with me, you might have other ideas, and, and, and uh, there are certainly many others that we could have posted, but I have about a, a half an hour or so worth of, of superlatives to share with you today, and I, I hope that it'll be a fun and colorful and, and, uh, and, and uh, educational time. So I'm gonna start uh, with the oldest, and I, I wanna point out that some of the superlatives, I'm gonna include some runners up. Uh, sometimes uh, there's, there's a, a noteworthy one to include. Sometimes uh, there might be a tie, uh, and, and you might need to decide for yourself which deserves the honor. But for this first, the oldest, um, I'm gonna, gonna start with a runner up, the alligator snapping turtle. Some of you might know of this, of this fascinating species. Uh, this is a species that came into being about 13 million years ago, so it's been around for a long time. So not only is it an old species, but the individuals get quite old too. Individuals in captivity have been noted for 80 to 120 years. It's, it, it's speculated that they might uh, last for 200 years or, or longer uh, in the wild. They get pretty big too. They're not our largest wildlife, but they can have shells up to two and a half feet in diameter. Individuals have been found that weighed over 250 pounds. So it's a pretty neat one. But the winner of the oldest, is the lake sturgeon. Uh, this is a species that's been around since uh, the dinosaurs, a uh, hundred million years. Um, the individuals uh, get quite old. Uh, they, can, they can reach a hundred years or older uh, in, in captivity in some places. This is also one of our largest animals in Tennessee. Uh, they can grow over nine feet long. One individual was weighed at uh, 396 pounds, almost 400 pounds. These guys uh, take about 30 years to reach sexual maturity. Uh, they were overfished, overharvested in the past. They were very popular for uh, caviar, uh, but they're slowly making a comeback uh, in Tennessee's waters. Well, I, I mentioned uh, a, a contender for the largest, but actually the largest animal in Tennessee is one that we lost for a while, uh, and that's the elk, the American elk. Uh, has several subspecies. The eastern subspecies that we once had in Tennessee is extinct, but several years ago uh, we brought back a subspecies from the Rocky Mountains from Alberta, Canada called the Rocky Mountain elk. And we have a small population of we think a little over 400 individuals uh, that, that live on the North Cumberland wildlife management area and areas around it in, in East Tennessee um, adjacent to Interstate 75 north of Knoxville. Uh, bulls of this species can weigh up around 700 pounds or so. So this is our largest animal that we, we're proud to have back in Tennessee. Let's go the other way. How about the smallest? There are several species that are contenders for this, and I'm going to few, include a few taxonomic groups. Um, Tennessee has uh, about uh, three or four dozen species of snakes, and the smallest is uh, this smooth earth snake that only reaches, this is a full adult, it only reaches about seven to 10 inches in length. Uh, not too terribly harmful, a pretty cute little guy. Uh, another of the smallest, many of us know, the beautiful ruby-throated hummingbirds. These guys only weigh about one to two tenths uh, of an ounce. So tiny uh, bird and the smallest of our birds. What about mammals? The pygmy shrew is the smallest land mammal in North America. It weighs about the same as a ruby-throated hummingbird. Uh, fascinating little animal. 
most of us never see with that elongated nose. But, but perhaps the smallest overall is the southern cricket frog. Uh, this is a full adult. Um, and, and one interesting additional fact about this guy is that this is the, the uh, best jumper in Tennessee. They can jump 36 times their, their body length, which if that was a human would mean they could jump around 200 feet or so. Um, uh, a fascinating uh, little guy that, that most people never see most mythical. Now I'm going to start with a runner-up uh, that, that some of you have probably heard of, and that is the common snipe. Now this doesn't win because uh, this is just backwards of what it should be. A lot of people think it's a myth, but it's a real animal. You've heard of snipe hunting, taking kids out in the woods with a flashlight and a gunny sack and leaving them there, uh, but uh, real snipes do exist and real snipes are really hunted uh, as, a, as a game species in Tennessee. The winner of most mythical is the Black Panther. Now, a lot of you are gonna uh, have stories to share and, and uh, your own experiences, but uh, let me talk just a little bit about, about panthers. Large cats uh, come in a few different species. The one native to, to, to all of North America is the mountain lion or cougar, okay? Now, what makes a cat black uh, is a condition just the opposite of uh, being an albino or albinism called melanism. But, but some species uh, don't ever do that genetically, and, and the mountain lion has never been found to be melanistic. However, there are two other large black cats that it very occasionally do. One is the leopard over in Asia, one is the jaguar down in Central and South America. Now, there are not many of them, uh, and, and ex it's extremely rare for them to be melanistic. But uh, jaguars, once upon a time, did occasionally make their way up into southern uh, North America and the United States. Uh, and every now and then, still, one or two will make it across the border into the, the southern tip of, of Arizona or New Mexico. They used to come across coastal Texas and Louisiana and maybe even further, but no longer. So those melanistic cats uh, uh, do exist uh, rarely in other parts of the world. Our mountain lion once existed in Tennessee, was never melanistic, uh, and, but has been extirpated from most of the eastern United States. However, in the past several years, the past couple or, or, couple or three decades, mountain lions in the western United States have been gradually increasing and when the young, particularly the young males, leave their, their natal range where they were born and travel in various directions, sometimes they go east and sometimes they've made it as far as Missouri and every now and then across the Mississippi and farther. We had one in Tennessee just a few years ago. It moved on, uh, but, but uh, there's, there's no reason to think that we might find more occasionally, very few here in the future. Not black, but mountain lions. Okay, let's switch gears. Freakiest. Now, the craziest wildlife. Boy, I could give you a long list. So I've got a few contenders here. I'll let you decide what you think is the, is the, is the freakiest. The, the Tennessee state salamander is the Tennessee cave salamander. You might have heard of it. It lives only in caves. It's fascinating because of these beautiful feathery external gill structures that allow it to, to absorb oxygen underwater. Another fascinating animal is, is uh, the Raffinesque's big-eared bat. Now, Tennessee has about 15 species of bats. Many of them, are, including this one, are declining due to uh, factors such as humans disturbing them when they hibernate in caves in winter, uh, uh, harvesting forests. These bats often roost uh, under the bark of trees in the summertime, uh, and, and also a, a disease that was brought into the United States several years ago accidentally uh, called white nose syndrome, caused by a fungus that gets on the nose of bats when they hibernate. It's a declining species. Many people think that bats you know, are kind of scary and creepy. Maybe they carry rabies sometimes, but uh, bats are very beneficial in the environment. They, they eat a lot of invertebrates, including mosquitoes and others. So uh, it's a, a fascinating group and a fascinating species. Uh, for, for the three of us, uh, is the star-nosed mole. This is one of uh, a couple species of moles we have in Tennessee. But it's very well known for this uh, fleshy uh, appendages on the nose uh, or tentacles. 
they hold about 25,000 to 30,000 sensory receptors called Imer's organs that allow them to detect vibrations in the soil caused by invertebrates that they seek out for prey. Interestingly, the star-nosed mole is also considered one of the fastest eaters. It, is, uh, it takes it about eight milliseconds to identify the ability of potential prey and as little as 120 milliseconds to eat it. Also, interestingly, they're, they're okay swimmers and they've occasionally been found to consume small fish. about most unique? Uh, this is one that I think a lot of you know, uh, the Virginia opossum. What makes it unique? Well, probably many of you know that this is the only marsupial uh, uh, native to the United States. Um, and that means an animal that, that, that uh, bears very premature young and they're, they're put in a pouch uh, um, that the mother carries them around in for, for a while. They also are fascinating in that when attacked, they sometimes play dead. Uh, and they also have more teeth than any other mammal in North America, 50 teeth uh, in the mouth of each individual. Um, uh, they, they uh, am among the mammals in Tennessee, have a lower body temperature than most mammals. So there's some diseases carried by other mammals that, that can't survive uh, in the Virginia opossum. So fascinating creature. It's aromatic now. It's easy to imagine that that might be a skunk, but Tennessee has two species of skunks, the striped skunk and the spotted skunk, or civet cat, as some old timers call them. Now, the spotted skunk is a fascinating animal. He's, he's a little smaller than a striped skunk. He's a pretty good runner. They can climb trees. Uh, and whereas the striped skunk has two Feels, which is the, uh, the compound, the chemical compound that causes that musky smell we're familiar with. The spotted skunk has three, so we might think of it as a little bit more aromatic or at least diverse <laughs> in, in its sources of aroma uh, than the spotted skunk. Most ferocious. Now, this is a tough one. Uh, my runner up that I'm going to call is the eastern king snake. Now, Tennessee has um, uh, three or four dozen species of snakes. Most of them are not venomous, but the Eastern King Snake is, is one of those snakes that, that eats, among other things, other snakes, including venomous snakes. That's pretty tough. So I, I think I would count that as a pretty ferocious animal. But my winner for this one uh, is the least weasel. This is one of two species of weasels in Tennessee. We have the long-tailed weasel throughout the state, but the least weasel is in East Tennessee. It's only about seven or eight inches long, uh, but they, they are known to be able to uh, uh, attack and kill prey that are up to four times their size, including large rabbits. Because of that, uh, this, this cute little guy uh, earns most ferocious food. Uh, most deadly. This is a tough one. Um, there's several species that we might consider deadly, uh, but, but often uh, not for reasons that, that, uh, that we imagine. Um, in the United States, we might think of the mountain lion, sharks, alligators, bears, uh, even scorpions and centipedes and captive elephants kill all, on average less than one person per year in the United States. Um, spiders, snakes, and cattle kill between one and six and a half people per year. Horses, 20 people per year. Dogs, 31. Um, mosquitoes, 43 due to diseases such as the West Nile virus. All of these are under 50, but if you consider bees, wasps, and hornets, they average about 53 people per, per year in the United States that they kill due to, due to allergic reactions. However, there is one even greater than this, and that is the white-tailed deer due to accidents with vehicles. Um, there are roughly 120 to 200 human fatalities per year in the United States due to vehicle collisions with white-tailed deer. Here in Tennessee, it's not so bad. It's usually less than one per year, uh, but we do have over 5,000 deer vehicle collisions every year in Tennessee, so be careful out there on the roads. Longest migrator. We have a runner up here, and that's the pectoral sandpiper. They travel from the Arctic Circle to Argentina, about 9,000 miles every year in the migration. They pass through Tennessee sometimes along the Mississippi River corridor. But the winner of this one is the Arctic Tern, which migrates 12,000 miles every year 
from the Arctic Circle, where it spends the Arctic summer, to Antarctica, where it spends the Antarctic summer, passing occasionally through Tennessee, again along the Mississippi River corridor. They live around 30 years, and they're a beautiful bird. Pretty fascinating. It's neat when you see one. Fastest, I bet many of you know this one. That would be the peregrine falcon, this beautiful raptor, when it goes into its hunting stoop, uh, diving after prey, can reach speeds over 200 miles per hour. Most lyrical. Now, this, this is very subjective. Uh, a lot of people have different ideas of what's the most beautiful sounding animal, uh, but Tennessee has over 300 species of birds, many of them songbirds or passerines. One of my favorites is the hermit thrush. And this is it. Let me see if I can pull out the song. haunting melody that many people love to hear on a, on a foggy morning on a back patio with a, with a cup of coffee. Um, let's go in the other direction. How about the least musical? Again, very subjective, but I think some that would qualify uh, to me and to some people are some of our toads. Now, some of our toads are, uh, make fascinating sounds. We have four species of toads. Uh, top left here is the eastern, no, oh, sorry, the Fowler's toad. Top right is the American toad. Bottom left is the narrowmouth toad. And bottom right is the spadefoot toad. They all have unique calls. But the spadefoot, I think, is the one that I'm going to consider the, the least musical or least lyrical. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Sounds like a thumb rubbing or a finger rubbing on a balloon, perhaps. <laughs> Fascinating, nonetheless. The most rare. Um, we have uh, uh, numerous threatened and endangered species in Tennessee, but the ones that have the very smallest distribution and the smallest number of individuals actually are outside uh, the range of the vertebrates. So I'm going to step into the world of the invertebrates for just a moment and introduce you uh, to the cave beetles. Three species in particular, the Fowler's, the Inquirer, and Noblet's cave beetle. They all look pretty similar to this, uh, and each one of them lives only in one cave uh, uh, in, in Tennessee, a very small uh, distribution, small range, very few individuals that have been impacted by, by humans visiting those caves. The coolest name. Okay, as long as I'm away from the vertebrates, I'm going to stay away from them just a little bit longer and, and introduce another species of wildlife in Tennessee, and that's the mussels. Tennessee, most people don't know, have more freshwater mussels than any other state except Alabama. I've always said I hate being beat by Alabama, uh, but uh, nevertheless, it's a, it's a fascinating group of animals, about 150 species of mussels. Almost four dozen of them are federally endangered, and they perform extremely valuable ecosystem services. Mussels filter water, and they clean it in the process. A large washboard mussel in Tennessee might filter 50 gallons or more of water in a single day. Mussels also have fascinating mantle flaps to attract fish. that They spew their, their glochidia, the young mussels, onto. They hitch a ride, they hitchhike, and the fish take them to other places where they drop off. In order to attract fish, they have a variety of um, adaptations, including a blue iridescent uh, a light in the springtime. Uh, it's fascinating to see in the mountain streams where some of them exist. But uh, the, one of the neatest things about the mussels is the variety of names that they've been given. Listen to some of these common names of some of our Tennessee mussels. Butterfly, spider, pocketbook, hickory nut, ring pink, bank climber, sheep nose, maple leaf, pimple back, creeper, monkey face, rainbow, purple bean, and pond horn. A fun group, a fascinating group that most people don't know about, and a very valuable group for our ecosystems. Now, I hate to, to talk about ugly, that's very subjective, but uh, I still love these guys. Uh, and, and I'm gonna argue that the, perhaps to some people, the ugliest species in Tennessee is the salamander called the hellbender. 
This is an aquatic salamander that lives in our streams and reaches up to two feet in length. So this is our largest salamander. And it's also one that's uh, declining due to poor water quality. You might argue that that's a face that only a mother could love. Uh, but many ecologists love the species and are working hard to try to bring it back to our waters statewide. Hmm. If we're going to talk about ugly, we can certainly talk a fair bit more about pretty. I'm going to start with the prettiest eyes. A lot of species that have fascinating eyes if you look at them, but probably one of my favorites is a dark crested cormorant. Look at them closely to see that ring iridescent shapes of, of iridescent blue around that green eye. It's just gorgeous. Some people think of this fish eating bird as a pest. Its numbers have dramatically increased in some places and perhaps caused some uh, ecosystem impacts. But it is a native species that is a fascinating uh, looking animal. Most striking. Uh, many species could, could apply here but one of my favorites is the woodpeckers. Tennessee has about seven species of native woodpecker today, and one of my favorites is the red-headed woodpecker. This is that. The woodpecker uh, is called a primary cavity nester. What that means is they make cavities in trees that they live in, and then the next year they go make another cavity. When they, when they move out, other species that live in cavities but can't make their own, called secondary cavity nesters, move in, such as eastern bluebirds or even wood ducks and many others as well. So these are valuable species uh, creating homes for other species to live in later. Most colorful, oh, many species are quite colorful. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go down through three, okay? Let's start with one of the 300 species of fish in Tennessee. We, we think of bass, and trout, and brim, and crappie, and catfish as game species, but most people don't realize that for every one of those game species, we have many, many small, uh, unknown, or no, nowhere near as well-known non-game species. We have more freshwater fish in Tennessee than any other state. This particular one is called the rainbow darter, and it's just beautiful. Let's leave the fish and go to birds. One of the most beautiful birds that we sometimes see in Tennessee is the painted bunting. Now, this is not a, a species that's usually here in the state, but occasionally we do see one. What we do see much more often is its relative, the indigo bunting, which is all blue and another gorgeous species. But the, the other most colorful species is probably my favorite, is the long-eared sunfish. Um, this is the the male during breeding colors. Maybe one of the reasons I like it is the UT Martin blue and orange colors. Uh, this is a species that can be caught by hook and line uh, in our streams uh, across the state. And it's common and it's quite beautiful. Cutest, this is uh, uh, very subjective, but uh, one of the, the groups that I've always loved is the owls of Tennessee. These nocturnal raptors, these nocturnal predators uh, uh, have a few different species. This is the eastern screech owl. You see it comes in two color phases, both red and gray. It's just a genetic difference like blue eyes or brown eyes. But even, even more beautiful than the screech owl, in my opinion, is the northern saw wet owl. This is a common species, but seldom seen. It's one of the smallest owls, only about the size of a robin. They eat mostly mice and voles. But uh, regardless of, of how seldom they're seen, you have to admit that's a cute little guy. I'm going to end with uh, a species that I think of, and many think of, is one of the most beautiful species of, of animals, of birds, uh, in Tennessee, in the United States, perhaps in the world. Uh, and that is. Uh, the wood duck, this male with his breeding plumage, uh, is, is so spectacular. And it's a species that uh, declined in past decades dramatically, but it lives in cavities. And by putting wood duck boxes back up and trying to restore a lot of the wetlands that they depend on, we've allowed this species to return to, to healthy populations today. And I could go on, but there are so many uh, uh, fascinating species, like I said, each with their own story. I want to end with one last point. Uh, as humanity has, has uh, taken our place in the world, we've increased uh, our footprint. Uh, and, and a lot of the areas that were once plentiful habitats now are taken up by, by our homes. Uh, the, the, the region of the southeastern United States that you see top left here, um, 
uh, the dark areas show areas of low housing density and the, the, the lighter colors, the red colors show high housing density. You can see where, where Tennessee is there um, with uh, Memphis and, and Nashville and Chattanooga and Knoxville and the Tennessee River Valley. This was in, in 1940. Uh, in 2040, we, we uh, estimate that uh, our housing density is going to look more like this uh, on the bottom right. Uh, so it's important to keep in mind that, that uh, as, we, as we take our place in the world, uh, every bit of habitat that we can set aside and preserve and conserve uh, for this, this beautiful, diverse, natural heritage of, of Tennessee's wildlife, each with their own stories, uh, there will be great value in, in preserving those areas. Have a great day.